and welcome to another exciting episode of Can It Take a K-26? The show where we take a variety of blasters and see if they can be upgraded using a K-26 spring. I am your host, Captain Xavier, and today we're going to be covering two more vintage blasters. And it should be the last vintage blasters for a while because I think I'm now out of vintage blasters. I may have a few more kicking around in the bin, I will have to check. Anyway, our first contestant is the Razor Fin. The Razor Fin was originally released in 1997 as part of the Max Force 2112 line. And as with all of that line, it's strangely animal looking. And it has some neat gimmicks, for instance. This back here is both the trigger and the lever for deploying the fins. I don't know why. But yeah, when you squeeze it, the fins come up. But that doesn't actually directly fire it. The, the catch mechanism is there in the handle. You can actually see it. It's externally exposed, which is unusual. And when you prime it, when you press in, the fins come up, but it doesn't fire until you press it a little bit further. And you'll notice it didn't fire, and there's a reason for that. It has two barrels and then has an internal rotating mechanism of some kind, similar to what you see on the Busby, Busby um, smart AR blasters that aren't actually a smart AR, it just rotates. So um, you have to have the dart in the barrel that's currently lined up with the cylinder and all that. Other than that, it is, as you can see, very much a precursor to the Jolt. Another Jolt pre-skin, if you will. <laughs> anyway, let's get this thing open and see if it can take a K-26. Ah, right while we're in, and the first thing that I noticed is that I had assumed that the barrel rotation mech was linked to the priming function. So when you primed it, it rotated. But it isn't. It's actually linked to the fin deployment mechanism. Um, so if you're paying really close attention, you can switch between barrels. Trying to remember which one you're actually on is somewhat more difficult, but that is actually the mechanism that rotates it right there. So this is the barrel switch mechanism, which is fascinating. Other than that, it appears to be fairly straightforward. Direct plunger. It's really going to be a matter of all. K26 will fit. So... Let's see if we can find a section that's the right length. It has the style of plunger head that does come off fairly easily, which is nice. I've left the uh, flattened coil on there because of that disc. I was worried if it was uneven pressure, it would be bad. Oh, we've got it just the right length. All right, well, the K26 does in fact fit. Now we just need to button it up and uh, see if it will actually catch and fire. But first, a word from our sponsor. Printer. Simply moving. Alright, well, I got it back together. Now for the moment of truth. Well, it caught. And it fires! What do you know? Now it's real picky. You gotta pull really hard, so it probably could do with about half a coil less. Maybe a full coil less if you could get away with it. But, uh, yeah, it'll catch. So, yeah, the Razor Fin can, in fact, take a K26. Probably would take a little bit more off. Uh, just to make sure that it still catches, because that was really right at the very limit of compression. But, um, I think it would be really neat, since the rotation is based on this... rather than the prime. I think it would be neat, since the uh, barrel selection is based on squeezing the handle rather than actually on the prime, if you were to re-barrel it, possibly one in modern mega and one in elite, I think you could probably find enough room in there. Maybe. Elite might be too big. You might have to stick with um, old school mega and elite, and then you would have uh, the option of one or the other. The trick would be knowing which position it was in, you might be able to work up some kind of a, an indicator 
that would tell you which position it was in. That would be kind of neat. But other than that, it's just a neat blaster. So let's move on to the next contestant after these messages. All of the K26 used on this series was donated by Out of Darts. Check out his new website at outofdarts.com for all your nerf modding needs. Our next contestant is the Nerf Electric Eel. The Electric Eel was also released in 1997 as part of the Max Force 2112 line, and it has a number of interesting features. Um, it feeds using a slide. Now, a lot of people would refer to this as a clip. Technically speaking, a clip is used to hold bullets so that you can feed them into a magazine, whereas this uh, is a series of individual um, chambers. And this is actually what's referred to as a slide for a harmonica gun. And it's called a slide because it slides. Anyway, uh, it is one of the early blasters that held any kind of high capacity like this. Uh, they are interchangeable with several other blasters from this era. So this was a standardized um, slide and it did work in several blasters, which is cool because it means I can finally actually demonstrate this one because I didn't have the slide for it before. It took two AA batteries and then there's an on switch and I assume this light turns on when it's on. And then there is some kind of a UV or light blinking thing similar to what's in the Firefly, it just looks exactly like what's in the Firefly, that would light up glow-in-the-dark rounds, which is fairly impressive for 1997, I think. Um, I don't believe this is the original slide. I don't know if the original one was shorter or if it was clear so that that light would work better, or if it was, in fact, just like this. I couldn't find any documentation one way or the other. It is, other than that, it is reverse prime, direct plunger, as far as I can tell. Um, thoroughly uncomfortable. This handle is small and awkward feeling. I do not like it. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's similar to many of the silly blasters they had in that era. So let's get this thing open and see if it can take a K26. It uses entirely triangular screw heads. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's not cool, Hasbro. Not cool. came up with that idea kick in the junk you know the deal all right I will be replacing those screws with different screws let's take a look at the inside of this thing oh look and they glued it together too well whatever their reasons I tried putting um, fresh batteries in but uh, it didn't turn on so the internals don't actually work anymore but let's take a look at this plunger system if we can without losing any parts of it. Well, that's cool. For a second there, I thought the uh, back of the plunger rod was glued on, but it's not. It's just socketed, which is actually really nice. All right, that is a fairly short spring. Almost no pre-compression, so we can, should be able to get away with a fairly small section of K26 if we can get this spring off of here. Not a long spring, which... Look at that, we got one exactly the right length. Cool. All right, well that catch spring is almost certainly not going to be sufficient, so we're gonna increase that while we're in here as well. Well, K26 fits. Interesting, uh, <laughs> the switch they have for the, the whole lighting system, it's on trigger pull. And uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fascinating. There's a piece of metal on the trigger and a piece of metal stuck in the in the shell and it when you pull the trigger it pr it connects the two. Uh, it, they don't have any kind of a, uh, a self-contained switch. Fascinating. All right, well, now we just need to put this thing back together and test it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tyrannosaurus. I'd follow that man anywhere. 
All right, fortunately, these old Nerf spray screws are very, very similar to some of the newer ones, like the screws from the Deploy or the Stampede. So I do have plenty of standard Phillips screws of a similar thread and length to replace those triangular headed monstrosities. It's back together. Let's see if it'll catch. It will. I wasn't expecting that. And it shoots. Not particularly well. It didn't shoot well to begin with. It's old. That's kind of how it works. All right. Well, that is another yes for the Max Force 2112 line. Still fascinating not a whole lot i honestly feel you can do with this given that the uh slides only held five rounds and you can't get them I, i'm sure somebody could design one that could be 3d printed that could be longer uh but you're just never going to get very good power out of these because the seal on the back of the slide is very poor and rudimentary if you were to improve that maybe but it'd be tricky to improve it and still have it be able to slide so eh not a great option, but if you happen to have one and just really like it and want to improve it, now you know it can take a K26. Let's recap. All right, for those of you just tuning in or who just skipped to the end to see the results, that was a yes for the Razor Fin, and that was a yes for the Max Force. Once again, the, the old vintage blasters, there's a toss up whether they had a sufficiently large enough plunger tube to fit K26, and then sometimes you ran into issues of compression. These two are just barely on the edge. You actually have to pull pretty hard to get it to actually catch. I would love to be able to take one more ring off of the spring that's in there, but then you'd end up with spring rattle. So it's, it's just right on the edge there. But they will, in fact, take K26 and catch and fire. Um, I, I, I don't know how much... Uh, how thoroughly I would recommend doing so because these older blasters are rare tend to be a little bit more expensive and if you put k26 in them they are going to break eventually uh, just from the added stress but if you just really want to take one of your old blasters and beef it up enough to take it out on a war and have some fun they'll take a k26 you could of course rebarrel them for elite you know it's fairly easy there's a number of materials that work fairly well to rechamber from um, old Mega to Elite. You could do the slide the same way. I'm, you could, I don't know if there may even be a 3D printed slide form out there already. I'm just not aware of it. But there you have it. More vintage blasters that can take K26. Uh, let me know what you would like me to cover next. There are still some a bunch of new blasters from this year that I have not acquired yet. Uh, the Scavenger and the uh, Delta Trooper, obviously. Um, I also have still have a number of stuff that people have sent me that I need to test those Star Wars blasters as well as another box of pistols that will probably explode uh, and I'll, I'll probably do those as a end of season or, or something at some point but if there's ones out there that you would like me to test let me know and I will see about hunting them down and uh, thank you guys for watching